vaporization and vapor pressure. Now we are going to cover the transition between a liquid and a gas in more detail. We'll define vaporization and vapor pressure, including describing the molecular processes. We'll then relate its rate to various components such as temperature, surface area, and intermolecular forces. Mathematically, we'll calculate how much liquid can be evaporated into a sealed container. The transition between a liquid and a gas is called vaporization. Or often we will also call it evaporation. Before we talk about what this is in molecular terms, first I want to ask you something. When we want to evaporate something quickly, what do we do with it? We heat it, of course. So this is going to let us talk about the molecular idea behind vaporization in a way that we can tie it into what we already know. This is also often called boiling because we are increasing the temperature of something to the point where almost all of the molecules will vaporize or it will do so very, very quickly. We want to talk about this in terms of a molecular point of view, but first I need to review something about molecular speeds with you so that we can relate that to temperature and relate that to why increasing temperature would increase the rate of vaporization. Think back, and this may have even been in a different class, to when we looked at molecular speeds in gases. We learned that there was a distribution of speeds in a sample. The same is true of liquids. Some of the molecules are moving quite slowly, some are moving quite quickly. Just like in gases, on average, the hotter the sample, the faster the molecules move, and the more kinetic energy they have. So this isn't exactly new information for you, but rather telling you what we have learned about molecular speeds in gases and relating that to the molecular speeds in liquids. Our lowest temperature will have our lowest amount of high speed molecules. Our highest temperature will have our highest amount of high speed molecules. And this is very important for the next part. During the process of vaporization, the molecules that are moving quickly in the sample are above the kinetic energy that is required to allow them to escape the pull of the intermolecular forces. Many molecules will not be fast enough or will not have enough kinetic energy to escape that pull. These will stay in the liquid sample. If we do not any apply any more heat, eventually the sample will cool because all of the escaping molecules will cause a cooling effect. At this point, it equilibrates with the room and more molecules are into that past the kinetic energy, past the threshold energy needed to escape. And this happens continuously, allowing even at room temperature, water to slowly evaporate from the ground. We will eventually go into the mathematical thermodynamics of this, but for now, we just need to know this concept. Let's look at one more concept needed to fully explain this. And this is dynamic equilibrium. In a dynamic equilibrium, the amount of products and reactants are staying the same. However, it's not due to a static state where nothing is changing, but rather the rate of the forward and the reverse process are the same. Let's use an analogy to help here. Let's say that you have a bank account with $1,000 in it, and this month you get paid exactly $3,000. However, you also spend exactly $3,000 in expenses. At the end of the month, you still have $1,000, even though you both made and spent money. The same is true with both physical and chemical processes. If the rate of the forward and the reverse process are the same, then it is in a dynamic equilibrium. If you have a sealed vessel, eventually the pressure in the top portion will stabilize. When this happens, a dynamic equilibrium has been reached, and this is called the vapor pressure. So now that we have these two concepts, vaporization, or molecules escaping, and vapor pressure, the idea that if you seal the container off, this will continue to happen until a maximum is reached, or the vapor pressure. Now we can talk about the effects on vaporization. The rate of vaporization increases with increasing temperature. 
You actually knew this before we even started this section. When asked, how do you make something evaporate faster, heating it is a very quick answer. We know that if we want a bowl of water to evaporate, we'd need to wait a really long time if we didn't heat it. So, the rate of vaporization increases with increasing temperature. We also know from life that if we have a bowl of water, it's going to take a very long time to evaporate as compared to if we take that bowl of water and throw it across the floor. This increasing of surface area when you drop it on the floor increases the rate of vaporization. Let's think about this from a molecular terms though. With more surface area, it is more likely that the molecules with a high enough velocity to escape will be near the surface. So unlike with heating, you aren't increasing the distribution of the molecules past the kinetic energy needed to escape, but rather making sure that those that have the high enough kinetic energy to escape are near the surface where that is possible. We all know what water looks like when it's evaporated when spread over a surface. It evaporates relatively quickly, but not so quickly that we can effectively watch it. I want you to look at something with less intermolecular forces. So instead of comparing temperatures or comparing surface areas, now we're looking at two different things that have two different sets of intermolecular forces. To do this, I need you to either go off to the internet yourself or actually do the example yourself since I can't put it a YouTube video inside a YouTube video. So you can go to the site that I have here or try it yourself. Pour a small amount of water onto one part of a surface. Now, on another part of the surface, pour a very small amount of isopropyl alcohol. That's otherwise known as rubbing alcohol and isn't dangerous if you use a small amount. Water has much stronger intermolecular forces because it has two hydrogen bond areas, as opposed to isopropyl alcohol, which just has one. Watch the difference between these. You can see from either the video or your own experiment that when molecules have less intermolecular forces, such as the isopropyl alcohol, it evaporates much faster. This is because it takes less energy to break apart from that liquid and evaporate. Those are all the conceptual ideas behind this, but now let's do one type of mathematical example that comes from this sort of problem. If we know the vapor pressure of a liquid, and we put it in a defined space, so we close the container off, we can determine how much liquid is left over, if any. To do this, we will use the ideal gas law to determine how many gas molecules in moles the space is able to hold. We will then compare this to the amount of a chemical that we have, if any, and how much is left over. Here, we'll use the ideal gas law and solve for n. If you need some review on the ideal gas law, just go revisit those videos. For our pressure, we'll be using the vapor pressure because all we care about is the pressure of the substance that is going to be evaporating. We'll use the volume of the container, we'll use the R, and then we'll change temperature to Kelvin. Notice that I have to change the vapor pressure from tor into atmospheres. Remember that this is to cancel out with the R constant below it. When we solve this, we get 1.9 times 10 to the negative third moles. Remember that this is the moles of the gas that the space can hold, according to the vapor pressure. We want to compare this to the initial amount of sample, which was given in grams. So let's do one more step and convert this to grams. To figure out the grams that the space can hold, we're just simply going to convert between the moles of water into the grams of water. From here, we get 3.5 times 10 to the negative two grams. Our final step is to look at how many grams that the air can hold of water as compared to how much water we put into the container to begin with. We started with 1.25 grams and removed 3.45 times 10 to the negative second grams of water and moved it up into the air. This leaves us with some water left over, specifically 1.22 grams. In review, we have several concepts of vaporization. We know that vaporization is the process of a liquid turning into a gas. 
we know that different gases can exist at different amounts of pressure, and this pressure is called the vapor pressure. Increasing the temperature in the surface areas increase the rate of vaporization. Decreasing molecular forces will also increase the rate of vaporization.